Hi everyone, so um, this is the live class for today. Hopefully some of you saw the post that we put up earlier on what the focus of the class will be. Um, so it'll be a bit different from yesterday. Yesterday was a lot of cardio, a lot of high intensity. This one's going to be a little bit slower, um, more focusing on strength and stability rather than really, really jacking your heart rate up. So it's really, really important that you um, do different styles of training. Um, this can be a very stressful time for a lot of people, so um, having a body of absolute crazy training um, isn't going to be beneficial in the long run. So you're going to be focusing more on strength and moving really, really well. So these ones are all going to be body weight exercises. Again, I know some of you guys have got weights at home. If you want to make it a bit more challenging, then um, then do so. You can use a kettlebell or a dumbbell or anything. We're also filming this to put it on YouTube, so if you want to follow afterwards, then that's absolutely fine. Um, so the workout is going to be um, what I put up on Facebook. So we're going to be doing a few supersets. So um, I'll quickly show you guys what the movements will be, but then as we're doing them along together, um, I'll sort of go over them again because they're ones we want to make sure you get them absolutely right. So the first one's a single leg um, RDL, so single leg Romanian deadlift. So you guys have two choices here. So I don't know if the camera angle is very good. So you're focusing on a hip hinge like, a, like you would with a loaded deadlift, like you would with a bar if you were doing um, a deadlift uh, with weights. But you're obviously going to be on one foot, so you're going to think about really hinging at your hips. So you should work your hamstrings and your glutes. Um, so I'm going to give you a few different options depending on what level you want. So um, for the first one you can have your back foot sort of rested on your toe. So I think you can't quite see my feet on the floor, so I'm just resting it there and you'll just be hinging over, keeping a neutral spine, and then standing up. So you're feeling the stretch in the hamstring and also working your glute a little bit. So you're trying to keep most of the load in this front leg. So that'll be like the easiest option. The second option would be to take your foot away and then still stand up. So you're still really focusing on staying balanced. Um, it's gonna really work your ankle and foot stability as well. The hardest option um, is gonna be to hover your um, sort of free foot, the one that's not working, next to your working leg. So I'm gonna do it from the front so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you're still hinging over with the um, opposite hand. You're kind of reaching in line with the big toe of the standing foot as far as you can, and then you're gonna stand up. So from the side, it will look like this. So you see like my spine's still neutral, so I'm not like hunched at all. So it will depend on the flexibility of your hamstrings how low you can go. If you're really, really tight, it might be like just here for you, that's absolutely fine. If you're fairly flexible, you'll be able to get a bit lower, wherever you feel the tension there, and then stand up. So that's gonna be like the first movement. It's fairly slow and controlled, and we're gonna do it as a superset with curtsy lunges. So a curtsy lunge, um, you'll stay on the same standing foot, and then the back leg's gonna go round, knee taps to the floor, and then you're gonna stand up. So, if you want to make that a little bit harder, you can try it without putting the knee down at all. So it'll be like that, or just um, as light touch as possible. So that'll be our first superset. So how that'll work is we'll do 10 Romanian deadlifts straight into 10 curtsy lunges, swap to the other leg, and then we're going to move through that all three times. Um, then we'll have a little rest. The next movement is a single leg sit to stand or pistol squat. So this is quite a leg focused one. So um, these are again different progressions. I'll just quickly show you guys what the movements are. So um, the idea of a single leg sit to stand, you will need a chair for this, so I should have told you that. Um, this is a progression towards a pistol squat, which I'll show you in a minute. So the first option, the easiest option, is just to do a really slow eccentric. So you're sitting down just on one leg and then stand up on two. If you want to go for like a little bit harder, you're going to sit down on one leg and stand up on one leg. And then the hardest option, I've not warmed up yet, so I can't do a full pistol yet. I'm gonna have to use a little um, a little weight like it's a heel riser. I'll probably have to use it to the whole workout as well because my ankle movement is really rubbish. Um, so a full pistol squat, if you can do these, this will be the hardest option. So you can hold onto your toe or not, squatting all the way down and stand all the way up on one leg. So that's what you're working towards eventually. So if you go with the chair option, that's great. Hopefully in a few weeks time, if we're still doing this movement, you'll be smashing pistols. 
Um, so that's going to be superset with a glute bridge march or march out. So sorry, I know this is loads of explanation at the beginning. Um, you probably just want to get on with it, but um, it's easier if we explain it now before you'll get warm. So you're going to be down in a glute bridge. Squeeze your glutes up to the top. If that's fine for you, you can literally just do like 10 glute bridges like this. But I think most of you guys will be able to try a slightly harder option. So this will be the first option. You're just marching your legs. So it's a little bit of hamstring activation. If you want it to be even harder, then you're going to keep your hips up, but step your feet out so that your legs go long. So my hips are stayed up, I haven't let them drop. So my hamstrings are working really hard, and then you step them back in. So that'll be like one rep, two reps like that. So keeping your hips up the whole time. Um, so then again, that will be as a superset. So we'll do the pistols slash sit to stand along with the glute uh, bridge marches. The next move is a shrimp squat. So um, a lot of you guys probably wouldn't know what this one is. So it's like a single leg squat where you're tapping your back knee down towards the floor. So I find this a lot easier if I've got a small counterweight, just something to hold on to. So um, I've got like a little mini weight, but if you've got just like a bag of flour or something, that would do as well. Um, if you can do it without anything, then even better. So you're bending down so that your back knee touches the floor. <laughs> Hopefully, you've got less wobbly than me. So that's quite a challenging movement. Um, if you can't quite get your knee to the floor, just grab yourself like a pillow or a yoga block or something so that you've got kind of like a target or a stimulus um, so that you can touch your knee to it each time. So you know once you've touched it, then you just stand back up. So that would be your best option. That one we're just gonna do on its own. It's probably the most challenging movement, I'd say. So we're just gonna do six on each leg for three rounds. And then the last exercise um, is for your core, and I'll explain that when we get to it, I think. Um, those ones are a bit more self-explanatory. So hopefully um, that all made sense. I'll go through it um, as we move through the movements. So we're gonna start off with just a little bit of a mobilization, so starting off um, in a tabletop position on your hands and knees. Sorry, I'm taking my jumper off. I've got warm doing that. Um, so, we're going to start off just on your hands and knees. So, hands directly under your shoulders, like this, knees straight under your hip. And we're just going to go for uh, five rounds of cat cat. So, you're opening up your collarbones, nose up, tailbone up, and then rounding off the other way. So, you're pushing your shoulder blades apart. So, you're going to go five like that. Once you've done that, you're just going to reach through um, with your right arm, reach underneath, twist yourself towards the ceiling, and then you're going to reach all the way up to the ceiling. Five each side. So you should get a nice twist in your thoracic spine. Should feel pretty good given sat down working today. Other way, so five on your left as well. No, that's okay. So now because you're going to be working um, obviously on your legs a lot, we're just going to stretch out your ankles a little bit. So especially for if you're going to try the pistol squats, um, it needs quite a lot of ankle mobility. So um, if you just, you just pop yourself up into a downward dog like this, so really shooting your tailbone up, pushing up out of your shoulders, and you're just going to kind of pedal one foot at a time. So you should get a nice stretch down your calves. So then second into it, really drive both heels down. Then just step your left foot up outside your hand. You're just going to sink your hips down. So for this, um, you are very welcome to do it with your shoes on if you like. If you're wearing like running trainer kind of shoes, um, I'd probably say try it just in your socks. Obviously if you're outside, wear whatever you like. But 
for a lot of them, if you're wearing like really padded trainers, it's actually going to be harder. Um, so I'd say go for yeah barefoot or socks if you can. All right, so I've just swapped sides. Hopefully you guys did too. All right, then up your feet. We're just going to do um, just move through some squats and lunges. So just ten regular squats to start with, focusing on a nice upright position. A couple more. All right, now we're just going to do a lunge with a rotation just to get into his legs a little bit. So you're just going to lunge forward and twist over your front leg. So if I'm lunging forward my right foot, I'm twisting to my right. I know a lot of the time people go the other way and then it's really unbalancing. <laughs> so twisting over your front leg. A couple more each way. Okay, now last one, uh, it's called like an ostrich stretch, so um, it's kind of like that old school hamstring stretch you used to do in PE, but you're just going to sweep your hands with it, so um, front leg stay straight, you're sweeping down, and you're just going to alternate like that, so just getting those hamstrings nice and warm. And then just finish off just a little twist side to side, get your back moving a little bit, and then we'll get into it because these are all body weight movements, so um, you'll get nice and warm as we go through them. So, just to quickly go over it again, uh, the first one we're going to do is three rounds of 10 single leg Romanian deadlifts. So, remember your options are floating, like your back leg floating, or the harder option, really hinging at your hips but keeping this leg floating next to your other leg so it's not on the floor it's like hovering about an inch off the floor next to your working foot um i know some of you guys like claire i know you've got a kettlebell so if you are using that um as a weight hold it in the opposite hand from the working leg if you want to add a little bit of load um, and then we're going to alternate that with the curtsy lunge so that's this kind of lunge so hopefully you guys are ready i'm going to see i think we've got a load of you guys joining in ria nice Becky, hi, so we'll get started. So let's start off on the right leg. So this one's gonna be like a little slower than usual. So pick your option. Draw your core in, shoulders back. Imagine you've got a piece of string pulling you up so your spine's nice and long and you're just gonna hinge over. So slight bend in the working leg and then stand back. So you should really feel it's working your butt and your hamstring. So 10 in your own time. I'm just going to turn around so you can see a little bit from the front as well. So you might feel like you're wobbling a little bit, that's fine. You'll feel it kind of working your foot, working your ankle. You should start to feel it being a bit difficult now. Okay, so that was our right leg. Now you're going to go into those curtsy lunges. So all the way around, stand it up. So you're starting to build up a bit of fatigue in this glute. So going for 10 this way. So keep thinking about drawing your core in nice and tight. Brilliant, all right, so now we switch to the other side. So, left leg this time. You should be feeling that butt burning a little bit. So now we're going for 10 RDLs. So remember the options here if you want it, if that's better for you. Ooh. Really focusing on keeping your spine straight, so think, length of your spine over how low you're getting. So if you've got tight hamstrings, you might just be going to here, that's absolutely fine. All right, now we're going for those curtsy lunges. So I'm just gonna do it front on so you can see how it looks. So like that, so I'm kind of not putting my foot down. I'm actually keeping it, that one lifted. 
So starting to build up a bit of fatigue in the outside of your glute. Alright, brilliant. So hopefully you guys can feel that working a little bit, have a little shake off, and then we're going back to the right leg. So straight in. So back to those dead deadlifts. Really focus on hinging at your hips. If you're a little bit warmer now, you might be able to get a bit lower. So it's not about how fast you can go on this one. Slower and controlled is actually better. Alright, then straight into those curtsy lunges. straight over to the other side whenever you're ready so if you're going a little bit slower that's fine just follow along you're just doing three rounds in total so hopefully you guys are starting to feel it working a bit I know I am if you're finding that the option you picked maybe is a little easy and you want to go through the challenge try this version so you're reaching with your opposite hands so in line with your big toe of the opposite foot For those curtsy lunges, so right leg goes around the back. Hopefully, you guys can see. Sorry, I'm but probably that's probably better, isn't it? Tapping your knee down at the back if you can. If you want an extra challenge, you can kind of try and go down without really touching. Doesn't matter if you wobble a little bit, that's just your body working hard. Alright, quick shake out. One more round of this one. So back to that with his right leg. RDL. So remember you can also have your foot tapped down here. So this is fine. Two. If you want that little challenge, maybe don't quite get the foot down totally. Brilliant, right? And last time on your left leg, so the Romanian deadlift. Sorry, I'm wandering all over the place with the camera today. Hopefully you guys are feeling this a little bit. Want me to have a break in a minute, let me know. The first time I did these, I had dogs in my hamstrings for a good few days, so more so than if I'm lifting heavy, I'd say. Keep drawing your tummy in the whole time so that can keep your lower back protected. Alright, once you've done 10, Last round of those curtsy lunges. So you're reaching around as far as you can. So if you want that challenge again, try and not put it down so much. All right, brilliant. So quick shake out. Hope your legs are feeling it a little bit. Um, so, just if you guys can let me know how your legs are feeling, if you're feeling that working a bit. Well, quick shake out. 
Then we're going into that single leg sit to stand. So grab yourself a chair. Um, if you're like me and you're gonna try the pistol squats, um, if you feel like you're kind of going down for pistol squat and you feel like you get to there and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna fall backwards, it's probably your ankle mobility, same as me. So if you just put something underneath your heel, um, it could be like a little book or something, just to raise your heel a little bit. That will take the mobi ankle mobility issue out of it. So we're gonna be alternating. So either your single leg sit to stand like this, um, or the eccentric, so you just go down slow, help yourself up with your arms, um, or pistol squats. Then we're alternating it with those glute bridge and march outs. So when you guys are ready, we're gonna go straight in with those pistols. So it's 10 on each leg. So let's start off with your right leg as the working leg. With the pistols, you can have your arms out in front. I find it easier to hold on to my foot. So let's go. 10 reps. Remember, if you're doing this on the chair, you can use the weight. If you're kind of like in between pistols too much, um, the single leg sit stands a bit easy. Add a little weight, that's fine. You might swap it back in around from yesterday. All right, let's go for it. You might find one side a little easier, one a bit wobbly. Hopefully maybe some of you guys tried those pistols with me. I might have to reduce that a bit. I think it might be a bit much for me. So we're getting down into that glute bridge next. So hopefully you guys can still see me. So remember the options here. I'm just a standard glute bridge. Or you're going through these marches. So 10 reps or march out. So really squeeze. Remember here, it's good quality movement. You don't have to go mega fast. Going slow is actually gonna make this harder. Try and alternate each side if you can. Keep driving your hips up. Feel your hamstrings working there. This is the last one, so we're going to hold it out here long if you can. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright, give them a quick shake. So we're back to those pistols or sit to stand, whatever you're going with. Again, if this is too many reps for you, drop it down. Maybe five is good. Find something a bit lower or 
stack yourselves up some little books to stand on so you're effectively raising the floor. Just any way you can so that you can kind of measure your progress a little bit. to the mat. I don't know about you guys, my legs are feeling it. So, back to those marches or march outs. So I'll just do the marches with you this time, just so you can see if you're keeping it slow. Keep your hips up. So keep reminding yourself, am I squeezing my butt? Am I driving my hips up? Because it's easy for it to kind of end up down here. a bit of a hug, have a little roll side to side, and we're going in for one more round. So, back to those pistols. I don't know about you guys, this actually feels harder <laughs> than anything I do with weights. So back to your right leg. Like I said, wobbles are okay. So remember you're still on the chair if you need. Back to that other side. I'm glad this is the last one, I'm getting to me. Okay. Sorry guys, bear with me, I'm sure some of you have finished. <laughs> like I said, take your time here. It's better to move well than fast than this. Nearly fell over on that last one. Okay, last time glute marches. So I'm going back to those march out. So squeeze your face together, hips up. We're going out, so alternate each time. Just make sure you're driving your hips up. I can feel I'm starting to use my back as I'm getting tired. Keep squeezing your tummy, keep it protected. Awesome, I think that was 10. Have a quick shake, let me know how you guys are feeling. Uh, we're going on to those shrimp squats next. So you might want to get yourself like a little um, target to aim for for this. So um, I've grabbed a yoga block or you might want a pillow and maybe a counterweight as well. A counterweight on this one makes it easier, um, so body weight's harder for this. So set yourself your weight up. For these, we're just going for six reps on each leg. So I'm going to grab my little counterweight. Again, same thing, rules apply. You're keeping your um, tummy tight, shoulders are back. If you've got your weight, bag flour, bag rice, whatever it is. Hold it out in front, still keep your shoulders back, you're not letting it pull forward. And then you're just trying to ease down, tap your knee to the floor, and then come up with control. 
So it shouldn't be like dunk into the floor, it should be slow. So this is a hard one for me. I have really bad tight ankles. So I wanted to work on this. So transferable to everything else you do. You've got a nice stable foot and mobile ankles. Your squats will be so much easier. Nice, okay, right, other side. So I know for some of you guys that are watching Becky, you're the same as me. Um, with tight ankles, I know you're much better squatting um, when you've got weights under your heels. So this one probably is a bit challenging like it is for me. So let me know how it feels. We're just going to do the same thing twice more, so rest as much as you need, you don't have to go straight into it. Remember if you're going for that target, as soon as you feel your knee tap it, drive back up, don't worry if you're wobbling. saying <laughs> it'll be gentler. Keep working, really squeeze your core. If you're like trying to pin your belly button into your spine, it can really help. Okay, quick shake off. We've got one more on each leg. So, last time, huh? you'll probably find as well, and I just did those on the mat, a hard floor is going to be easier, less wobbly. Same reason, if you're wearing running trainers right now, you might be like, oh my god, I'm wobbling everywhere. Uh, bare foot or converse leg break. I've got barefoot shoes on, so it's basically the same as no shoes. Pull this back foot so your heels are pulling up towards the bottom. Alright, other side. Nearly there, guys. We've just got core after this. Last one. Thank God those are over. So um, I'll quickly show you guys while you guys grab a drink. I'm just going to show you what the core exercises are today. So a little bit uh, different from what we did the other day. The first one will be a plank twist. So you're going to be on your forearms. Um, making sure that you stay in like a really solid position. So if you notice like your butt's up here, try and be strict on yourself. Think straight line, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. So also try and avoid this, like you can see my shoulders aren't over my, my elbows. So what we'll be doing is reaching the right arm through and then reaching up. So you're twisting through like this. So we're just going to do 10 each side of that. Um, and then we're going to be doing what's called a quadruped hold. So you're going to be in that same tabletop position that we started with cat-cow, turning your toes under and drawing your tummy in. You're going to be just hovering your knees like an inch off the floor, just holding there for 20 seconds. Um, if that's kind of like a little bit easy for you, then you're going to do the same thing and try and stay stable as possible. Really slow shoulder tap. So imagine you've got like, I don't know, like a tray of gin and tonics on your back, can't spill them. So you don't want to be like, kind of going like, like this. Your core's not really working that hard anymore, so it's like an anti-rotation exercise. So obviously as soon as you take your hand off, your body's gonna wanna flop. Your core's gonna be what stops you from doing that. So let's start off with those plank twists. So we're going for the right arm first. If you want to, you could be on your hand. I'm gonna go for on my forearm. So reaching through, 
and then reaching up to the ceiling, so slow and controlled. And our other side. If that's a bit much for you, hold plank, hold a side plank, whichever one you want to do, that's fine. Knees or toes as well, that's absolutely fine. If you want to be in a plank on your knees, go for it. So squeeze everything, squeeze your butt. shoulder taps, we're going to go for 10 alternating, so turn your toes, draw your tummy in, nice and controlled. So think about, is my back straight, am I wobbling? Twisting as far as you can. Imagine there's a piece of string here pulling your hip up. Or pulling your waist up, I should say. So four. Five. Six. Keep pulling it up. That's it. Squeezing everything. Seven. Eight. That's it. Nine. Ten. All right, brilliant. Other side. Well, the worst top for this today. It's falling everywhere. So, um, with this, make sure you're pushing up out of your shoulders. You don't want to be like kind of shrugged on this shoulder. To keep active. So let's go on this side. So reaching underneath. Remember that piece of string, pulling it up towards the ceiling. If that's too much for you to do 10, then you can just hold here. That's fine. Okay, back to that quadruped hold. So, hands on your shoulders, knees under your hips. Imagine you're drawing your belly back up into your spine. Think of those gin and tonics or, or wine, whatever you like. everything. Excellent. All right, we've got one more round. So we'll go back to that first one we did, full plank twist. Okay, so right behind first, so reaching through. I'm going to do it on my hand this time, and then reaching up to the ceiling. Shake. 
other side. Should be getting a shoulders working a little bit. So like I said, just holding here is brought on. In fact, I don't remember that for you, that's brilliant. Still squeeze your butt, squeeze your legs. If 10's too many as well, that's fine. Just go for whatever works for you. stretching so we're back to that quadruped hold. So hovering, tap each shoulder. off with a really nice stretch. Um, so as we've mainly worked our legs today we'll start off with a good leg stretch. So we start from pigeon pose so uh, we've done this one a few times now so bring that shin in line with the front of your mat and take the other leg back along. Come onto your forearm so you stretch out that glute. Try and sink into it a little bit. If you do have to shoot off, if you're a bit pressed for a uh, lunch break, please feel free to leave and then have a little stretch afterwards. That's it, make a stretch all round to the other side. So lower down. Let your heart rate come back down a little bit. If you want a deeper stretch, take that back foot around a little bit, so tiptoe around. Get a nice stretch in that glute. Okay, from here, you're just gonna press one foot back, so you're really like driving into that calf of that back foot. So really stretch back, stretch into your ankles. If you found some of those movements quite challenging today, um, a lot of those ones are really hard for me um, with tight ankles. Try and maybe work on your ankle mobility a little bit. So get those calves nice and stretched out. And the other side as well, so push back. If you want to feel that one a bit more, then you can put your weight down into it like this. Okay, from there. You're just going to do, uh, it's called a cat stretch, so um, it's, a bit, it's a quad stretch. Um, so pop one foot up on your sofa, and then you're trying to tuck your tailbone under, so uh, you should feel a nice stretch in your hip flexor down through the quad. So try and be nice and upright in your torso. So yeah, as you ease into it, you can maybe um, drive your hips forward a bit more. Or take your knee back a bit more so, so that your legs are effectively a bit more sort of compressed there. That's going to get a deeper stretch for you. And then the other side, so there's no graceful way to get out of that, I don't think. So I think tuck your tailbone under, proud chest. Take your feet together, same thing. This time you can kind of set your head kind of heavy. 
Maybe you should feel a stretch of your back as well. So that's a stretch all the way up to finish. And you guys are done. Thank you so much for joining me. I know my head was cut off for quite a lot of that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, let me know what you guys think. This is going to be available afterwards on Facebook. We've also recorded it um, for YouTube as well. So if you couldn't join us today at 12.30, um, then you can do it in your own time. So uh, thank you guys so much. We'll see you tomorrow, same time. Wait, is it? No, tomorrow is going to be at 10. It's the weekend, but who knows what day it is. Thanks, guys.